Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we are checking out Dreamscape, a pretty psychedelic little maze experience here and one that reminds me a lot of that game that drove me a little bit insane, uh, Dead End Cerebral Vortex. Uh, which essentially was a maze that you couldn't see where you were supposed to go to get through it. It's a similar kind of premise, but this one I think is actually maybe even a bit more interesting, although the graphics are definitely a bit more minimal as well. Uh, so what we have here is a maze, but the thing is, the maze changes every time you look in a different direction. So essentially everywhere that you were not seeing... Uh, which I think this had a name, isn't it called like quantum superposition or something, where like everything that happens outside of your range of vision is always in this constant state of flux until you actually look at it, and then it shores it up so you can actually, you know, maneuver and, and work with the information that is now there. Uh, I, I, sorry, correct me if I'm wrong or if that terminology is incorrect, but yeah, that's just uh, the thing that I thought I was remembering from a movie that I probably shouldn't be taking any information from, and you probably know what it is if you've seen it. Uh, so, uh, why are we here? What are we trying to do? The goal is to make it to the center of the maze, which contains, I believe, some sort of a black cube or something. And you can see there's these particles that are emanating from the center, and I just want to set up all this framework here before I start wandering, because after that it's going to become complete anarchy. Uh, but we've got these particles emanating from the core that we want to reach, uh, to give us some sort of a clue, even, what direction we're supposed to be headed in. Uh, and we've also got a bit of a sonar, which you may or may not be able to hear very lightly bleeping in the background. Oh, we can actually see the core right here. It's actually a sphere. Uh, and the sonar is essentially going to just give us an audio cue in stereo positioning of what direction we need to be headed in. Uh, so I actually don't think I can fail this as long as I don't... Oh, okay. No, it just decided to spawn in front of me. I thought it wouldn't change unless... Okay, wow, it's very loud. Unless I just, uh, you know, looked away from it. So let's see what happens if we beat this level. I win. And then we wake up. Well, I wasn't intending to beat the game this fast, for sure. Alright, well, we're definitely gonna have to do another run of that for certain, since I wasn't really anticipating winning that quickly. Uh, so here we are, we've loaded up another run, and we've got some very strange objects here that we can interact with. Uh, it's like a very large pill shape cylinder, and we've got a little sphere here we can push around. It's kind of cool that you can actually interact with them. I wonder if you can use them in any significant way, uh, maybe to like lock in progress if you put it in a certain... No, I don't think that's the case. Anyway, it's very surreal how the map will change all around you like that. You get used to what you think is going to be a compartment, and then all of a sudden it isn't. Uh, plus, there's always everything is in this constant state of flux, considering all the tiles, floor, ceiling, walls are all co uh, continually shifting in colors and creating some really interesting uh, clashing color schemes and patterns. It uh, would be kind of a cool concept if you could adapt this to use textures in some way uh, it, to create a, an interesting sense of progression, maybe, uh, that you could sort of lead yourself through a series of rooms uh, just based on the colors or the, the texture patterns that are going on. You know, maybe it could uh, form some sort of a groundwork for your ability to navigate the environment, I don't know. Seems kind of interesting to me. I, I'm just really enamored with the idea of the whole thing changing as you look around in circles. Uh, it's a, a really kind of an interesting idea, and it is also a little bit frustrating, I have to admit. If you are trying to get to a certain place, uh, you know, a, a point in space, the last thing you want to have happen is have everything close around you at all times. I would also love to see, and this is just purely from the, like, analytical point that I like to look at things, I'd like to see a map like an overhead top-down map that could just be for like a dev mode type thing, uh, showing the walls moving around as your frame of view changes, like show a view cone and then show how everything's adapting around it. I may have just seen the outside of the map geometry for a second there. I thought I saw what appeared to be sort of like a half-sized black tile, uh, so that may have been outside. See right there? That doesn't look like... Oh, I can actually jump. So you can actually see some... Uh, parallaxing, so to speak. I'm not sure if that is necessarily what you'd call it, but I believe that is outside of the map. We are now maybe completely outside of the map. Wow, okay, so we've entered... Oh, wow, this is interesting. We're actually progressing faster than the map can build. So we've created a scenario that reminds me a little bit of something like in Portal, 
uh, where you can now like see outside of the boundaries of what you're supposed to see. And what I'm a little worried about is that if the map doesn't start generating properly, maybe I'll be stuck out here. Although, granted, there are worse things to happen. I have to say the frame rate is certainly taking a bit of a hit out here. I think probably once you generate a certain area's worth of maze, it stays in memory. I mean, I could be wrong about that, but it sort of seems like the more I wander, the more the frame rate is getting crappy. So I won't take too long on this episode, because I just wanted to sort of talk about this concept uh, as it pertains to game development, and how I think this could probably be something very interesting and useful if it's adapted in the right way uh, into a larger... Uh, full-blown project. I mean, imagine if you were to play a first-person shooter where every time you played the game, and I, I know there's probably something out there that is similar to this, but essentially everything you see is always in this constant state of flux, and you don't know how to necessarily navigate the levels, but you know you're supposed to go to a certain place, and it's going to result in a, a new level of emergent-style gameplay that is even beyond procedural generation, this is, or maybe even random generation, although I suppose that's something you could say about this, uh, but maybe every single hallway you go down leads to a new area that could essentially lead to more new areas that go on forever if you don't actually focus your effort towards a central point. Oh, look, I have my opportunity now. I want to see if I can get outside of the geometry again and see the world from a different perspective. I feel like the architect in the Matrix or something. It's very exciting. Uh, well, all right, so the framer is getting, like, real bad, so I think I'm probably right about that idea I had a moment ago. Uh, it's a shame. I really hate putting up videos with subpar frame rate, but the game's kind of doing it to me, whether I like it or not. You'll notice when I first started the new run of this, uh, the frame rate was running at a, a nice, smooth 60 FPS, and now we are down to 12. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I guess we'll wrap things up. I hope you enjoyed this little look into what is more of like a game dev-centered episode uh, than per se just focusing on a, a specific title. Because honestly, the title here, it's more about an experimentation in gameplay concepts than it is about the actual game itself. So they all start gray, and then eventually they start to bleed colors into them, which is very cool. Uh, but I would love to see this concept adapted to somewhere else, uh, given new life and perhaps made a little bit more of it. I, I figured there were going to be a few levels. It wasn't just going to be, you know, reach the goal once and then the thing's over. But, you know, that happens from time to time. Uh, and I don't really fault anyone for it. I wonder what's the point of these little objects that keep appearing. Maybe there isn't any point. But they just, uh, they intrigue me a little bit, you know. The fact that they're there and they're interactive and have some sort of physics to them is kind of cool. Alright, so I keep saying I'm going to end the episode and then not doing it, so uh, this has been Dreamscape. Check it out, link's going to be uh, right in the description of the video. It is free to download a Unity game, and you can just grab it for uh, your, your PC computer. <laughs> so we've got a few things to run down real quick. We've got indie-impressions.com if you want to stay up on all the new postings in the series. We've got up to very, very close to 450 episodes now in the series, so in case you want to go uh, enrich yourself on some indie games that maybe you missed or some oddball kind of surreal craziness, uh, all of those are available for your perusal. Over on the website, they're all searchable by categories and different tags and such. I've also got a Facebook page for the series, facebook.com. Facebook.com slash Indie Impressions if you'd like to go over there. Leave a like, it helps me out. Just takes a second if you don't mind. And if you're a Facebook user, of course, then you can stay up on new news, uh, streaming announcements, contest game giveaways, and every day's new episodes, of course, are posted there as well. I do take recommendations and suggestions, so if you're an indie dev or a viewer and you want to get in touch with me about possibly recommending either a game or your game, quickest way to reach me is send me an email. I do have a contact form over on Indie-Impressions.com. And all of my social media links are available right in the description as well as the download link for this game, so feel free to look around in the description and leave me your comments. I am always curious to hear what you have uh, as far as opinions on these sort of very surreal, strange, uh, outside-of-the-box, well, although we're very much inside of the box in this game, uh, but just strange gameplay concepts, or maybe in this case experimentations is more the correct word, this isn't really a game so much as it is just a tour of uh, a cool idea. So yeah, let me know what you think about that. What would you do to adapt this sort of a concept into a game? Do you see the potential that it might be very frustrating if it's not executed just right, but at the same time it's counterbalanced by how surreal it is by the fact that it doesn't hold your hand? I don't know, it's a cool thing. Anyway, I'd love to hear from all of you. Let me know what you think in the comments, and be sure to come back again tomorrow because I do a new episode every single day. I do hope to see you back real soon, and I hope you have a lovely night. So I will see you later, guys.